Hey there, I'm Helper Wesley, the creator of Asteroid Dig, Atomic Trail, In and Out Night Burglar, a jam game, and now Asteroid Dig Mobile, my first commercial release. So let's get into the devlog. Leaving off from my last game, where all I had was a randomized room with some randomized resources and a character that could walk around. So from there I went to finalize what the lights were going to look like, which is not final, but basically finalize what the lights are going to look like. So I drew up some, some fading light effects, and I think I've decided that the train is just going to have its front light and then have an ambient light source that fills up just the tunnel that the train is in. But for now, this setup works. Then I moved on to making it so you could pick up and lay down resources, and immediately realized that I have no idea what I'm doing. So I fell back on what I did for Asteroid Dig, which was have one object that had multiple animations to signify it was something else. So the resource nodes now spawn one thing, and that one thing has a random chance of being one of the three different resources. This helps because in GDevelop there's this function called nearest object, and using one object with this condition meant that I could have a bunch of them lying down in, in a pile and not have any confusion about which one to pick up because it'll pick up whichever one is closest to my character, even if they're overlapping. Whereas if I'd done multiple objects, it would have caused issues because it wouldn't know which one to pick up and it probably would have picked up two or three at a time. So there might have been a way to do that, but this was simple and easy. So now in the game, whenever you press E while in collision with one of these objects, you'll pick it up and your character will carry it around. And if you press E again, your character will drop it on the ground. So once I was able to pick up and lay down resources, I had to give a reason to bring them to the train. So then I added the global variables for each resource, and a text that pops up whenever the train runs into one of these resources, and you're not currently holding it up. So yet when you walk in front of the train, you have to press E to drop it, and then the train will take it in. So you can see in the top left corner, I was showing the number that you were earning by dropping these off. Then I remembered the lag issue I was having with Asteroid Dig on a few phones, um, where the entire level in Asteroid Dig is actually moving, and the blocks that you're standing on are staying still, which is confusing. But because of that, there were more objects moving than needed to be, and this caused a lot of lag with some people. So I decided to just cut that out right away, as early as possible. So it wouldn't be harder to fix later down the line. So I swapped out what was moving in the scene and then added a camera lead in the center of the screen. So the camera's following this lead that's going the same speed as the train. And so now the scene itself is staying still and the train is moving like you would kind of expect it to anyways. While I was doing that, I also added in uh, death particles for when you leave the screen. So that way, you're kind of confined to the screen and you have to chase after the train because otherwise you would just get left behind. So now whenever you run into the edges of the screen, your character blows up into particle effects and you get zipped back to the train. For now you're still holding the resource, so I need to fix that. Uh, I don't want people to like pick up a resource and then run for the edges of the screen so that they pop back at the train and like speed run it that way. I also might add a delay in there so when you run into the wall, your character goes away for three or four seconds, so there's a penalty for doing it before they come back. Next I had to make a UI system. I'm terrible at art, and it kills me whenever I do this, but essentially I'm just picking colors at random, I don't understand color theory. At some point, hopefully down the line, I run into somebody who's going to be very artistic and will just be like, here, take this color palette and apply it to the game. But until then, I'm just going to keep picking colors at random because that's what I do. I just took the outlines from the original uh, sprites that I had drawn for the resources and then threw a color wash over them and put them up as the UI icons. So that way when you're picking up a, a wood block, for example, you'll look up and be able to see, oh, this thing I'm holding is a black outline version of the wood block, therefore this must, must be wood. Uh, ignore the, the settings icon that I'm putting up there by the way, that's just a placeholder. It's from Asteroid Dig and I just... I'll usually grab UI elements from other games because I've already drawn them, so why would I draw something new as a placeholder art? Because again, I've already drawn them once, why would I redraw them? And this is essentially what the UI will look like when the game is done. I tried having it over on the left, I tried having it split up between different parts of the screen, and eventually I just decided to put it in the middle. Some up top and some in the bottom, so that way they are kind of centralized, and it just doesn't look so strange. 
I think the way it looks there now is okay. Uh, obviously, they'll be redone to look better, but where they are is okay in my head. I might have to make it so that when the character goes behind one of these UI segments, the, they go transparent so you can see your character, but we'll see. Next, I had to create enemies, which is kind of important in a game that's supposed to have enemies. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have a placeholder art for ghosts, so I just drew this up really quickly. That's something I can put into the game and get going. Uh, I gave them a little bombing up and down animation so that even though they're going in a straight line, they'll have that like ghost. Ooh, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you know what I mean. That that like, yeah, you get it. You get it. Essentially, they're spawning from four different points just outside of screen, and then they're going straight for the train from wherever they spawn to. But since the train is moving sideways, they kind of have this randomized look to them because. The train's moving, and they're from four different spots, and they're going at four different speeds. Well, the same speed, but relative to the train, they're different. And so it looks like they're coming in sort of haphazardly and randomly into the screen, which is kind of nice, I think. I tried fiddling with this to make uh, improvements to how the ghosts acted and came in, but ultimately I just stuck with what it was, and now if you run into one of these ghosts, they blow up into particles. That will be changed again at some point. I just used the same particle effect that I have for when the character runs into the wall. And the last thing I did before putting it down for this week was adding the miles remaining tick down. So essentially there's these timer bars above the screen that are following the screen and whenever they repeat, they tick on the timer. Which, when the timer ticks, it drains your furnace's heat, so that'll slowly go down and it reduces the number of miles to the destination. I think this is how I'm also going to have the train character operate. Uh, whenever you have them set to a location in the train, set to a task, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this before, but if I haven't, then here we go. Along with your character in this game, I plan on having a character in the train who you can micromanage to get them to do different tasks, like craft things and improve this train speed and refuel the furnace and things like that. So with this ticking time system, I think that's how I'm going to do it. You go to the train, set your character to be on a different location, and then when you put them there, you hop back out of the train again and go back to what you're doing. But then when the timer ticks, it will then do the thing that the character is supposed to do. And it will do that continuously until you go down and change what task they're doing. So yeah, that's it. That's uh, what I got done this week. If you like this video, consider doing all the YouTube things, like comment, subscribe, you know, those things. I plan on releasing a devlog every Friday about what I'm working on seriously, and then if I have extra content, I will release a video on Wednesday for whatever that's about. If you want to talk to me personally, the link to my Discord is down below, and if you choose to click on that, then I guess I'll see you there.